All right, so today we got this thing back, the BK Precision Bench Power Supply, and um, I gave it back to the owner, and within 24 hours he blew it up, and I'm not sure how, but I'll show you. Let's see if I can zoom in on this uh, part. This is an op amp, and he actually took this out and then said, yeah, I'm going to give this back to you to fix because I don't know what to do at this point. But you notice the op amp uh, got a little hot <laughs> and uh, exploded. And I haven't even opened this up. I took the screws out, but I that's about as far as I went. But what he did was he connected it to a Tesla coil kit that he built, and it lasted about, he said, about 10 seconds. And he heard some ticking, and then a buzz, and then the magic smoke came out. So I'm not really sure what happened. The only thing I can think of is, if you can see, there is a board right here. I guess that's, I'm assuming that's where it went. So maybe it arced through here. Somebody else uh, that he spoke to said maybe the, the switching frequency of the Tesla coil was too great. But this is just a standard op amp. Um, excuse me, op amp. It's a, what is it, LM324N. So I got some of these and I have sockets. So what we're going to do is just replace it. We're going to put a socket in first and uh, replace the chip and just see if it turns on. If that's the case, I, you know, I I don't know what he's going to do as far as the power supply for the Tesla coil. He said he was using a, a computer power supply. And if that's the case, he can just keep using that because I don't know what it did to this. But we're going we're gonna to test it and see. So let's see where that chip came from. Yep, this is the main board. So this is the one we did before. And if you remember, the display was fading in and out. And uh, we replaced the two 5 volt regulators and just touched up some solder joints so hopefully the meters are fine so first let's just take a look the, the board isn't burnt or anything looks okay I don't see where this chip up oh, there it is there's two socketed chips down here um, looks like the sockets kind of melted a little bit so like I said we'll replace that he already had told me that um, it would need to be socketed, so that's. I made sure I got some extras. So let's take it apart and see what kind of trouble we can get into. There we go. We'll set that aside. Let's take a look at this. So yeah, that's pretty burnt. So this is a LM723. He said this is the one that came out of it, which is an LM324. And that looks a little cooked. kind of curious to see if that cap is okay because there's a little bubble at the bottom of it that's okay that looks just like dust so hopefully everything else is okay hopefully that's the only thing that died um, you know these little discrete components we can replace that's easy but nothing else seems to be entirely cooked I think that there was um, I think there may have been some EMI, and that's what cooked it. Like like the other person said, the switching frequency is a little off. Um, we're going to find out. So first thing, let's just test that resistor and see if it's still okay. And I'm going to do it in the circuit, so I may have to take it out, and at that point I'll just replace it. But it is 23.98 kilo-ohms, and it looks like a red, yellow, orange, so 24 kilo-ohms, close enough. So let's just get that socket out of there, put a new socket in, and just power it up and see what happens. It might be that simple. So if you notice, at the very top there is this dip, 
that indicates where the, the front of the chip is. And the socket also has that dip. It really doesn't matter which way you put the socket in as long as it all fits. As long and that the chip is actually placed in once that the chip is actually placed in the right direction. Alright, so there we go. New sockets placed in there. Let's see if I can get it to focus. And yeah, it does look actually really bad on camera. But it's actually not bad in person. It's just picking up the reflections the wrong way. Let me back out of this a little bit. Alright, now let's put a new chip in it and let's see if this thing works. Make sure all the pins line up so that nothing gets folded over. And just push it into place. Alright, so let's put everything back in here. And I'm going to place it in just enough so that it's grounded but not fully, uh, fully screw everything in. Just in case it doesn't work, I don't have to redo everything. Okay, so admittedly it's been a couple days. Um, you know, life kind of gets in the way sometimes. Last time we looked at this, uh, replaced the op amp, which uh, I believe was an LM324, if I remember correctly. So, but we did not test it. So let's test it. Might just be a simple matter of just replacing that, and the thing is up and running, and I can get it back to its owner potentially this weekend because it is now Friday. So let's. Uh, it's got power. Let's power it up. And 40, whoa, that is way over, goes up to 47, 8 amps, off. That's way over what it should be. Let's test the actual output voltage and see what the actual output voltage is. I gotta get it, like I said before, I gotta get it on screen. Multimeter. Alright, so let's turn the voltage up. And it's, yeah, it's reading way too high. So that's not good. We're gonna turn that off before we blow something up.